I'm Johnny Green, and uh, I'm your master of ceremonies for the evening. I've travelled around the world with a rock and roll band, The Clash. These days I travel with this bloke. Where he comes from, they call him the Bard of Salford. In Essex, they call him that poet bloke. <laughs> but I think we should refer to him as Dr John Cooper Clark. <laughs> Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dr. John Cooper Clark at the BBC, featuring me, Dr. John Cooper Clark. Welcome to my annual look at the last three days. <laughs> <laughs> the subject of this show is uh, textile obsession. The light motif will be mainly garment related. <laughs> and uh, I'm starting off with this one. Every man has at least three. Tiki shirts. A tiki shirt is the correct name for the Hawaiian shirt. Every guy has three of these. They never wear them. It seems like a good idea at the time. <laughs> they never wear them. They're never suitable. You know, you could have a, you know, a Paul Smith suit. But if you've got a tiki shirt underneath and you, and you attend a wedding, somebody's going to take you to one side and say, uh, why do you hate these people? <laughs> Here's 75 pence. Go to Sue Riders. <laughs> and anything you buy will be more suitable than this. <laughs> but you never throw them out, do you? You keep them in there in the, on the off chance that one day you might be invited to a barbecue in Miami Beach. <laughs> and why would anybody wear a shirt like that? They're not flattering, you know, they make fat guys look enormous and they make thin guys look like a walking easel for some unknown artist that specialises in tropical sunsets. <laughs> but you think about throwing them out every year and it's uh, so far I haven't been successful. It's going to be a sad day, isn't it? What man wants to have that inner dialogue with himself, you know? <laughs> I'm too old to wear this kind of shirt. I don't go to weddings, I go to funerals where it's doubly unacceptable. <laughs> So this is the poem that I would write on such an occasion. This is after the manner of John Keats, and I call this one, To a Tiki Shirt. <laughs> Default chemise of the constant manatees. Unfeasible resort shirt no man could ever fees. A guy would only wear one for a wheeze. Till somebody kicks your ass without saying please. What the hell would I do then? Get out of it and never brighten up my door again. <laughs> you make everybody except for Elvis look like a prick. You make even a monkey miss a trick. Those blistering tropical colours make me sick. Anything would look good on a Hispanic. Your one trick was to turn it up to ten times ten. Get out of it and never brighten up my door again. You were a big mistake, you big mistake, you. You got me barred from many a formal do. <laughs> I'll give you away tomorrow, but tell me who. Who but me and maybe Mr Magoo? <laughs> or that chimpanzee that died, or Sean Penn? <laughs> Good, you get out of it and never brighten up my door again. <laughs> it really works. We've all done it. Textiles. That's what they're calling us down the nudist camp. <laughs> That's their name, their derogatory name for the clothed community. <laughs> Textiles. So, it, with this in mind, I wish to alight upon the dress codes, the fastidious dress codes of a long neglected youth tribe, the casuals, or as they were known in the north of England, the smoothies. And I call this one smooth operetta. Hot sack with a perma crease, authorised by the style police. Frog mouth pockets on a flat front for work or leisure or pulling a stunt. When it comes to the classic callards, mate, Farrah's since 78. 
I got a pair in Air Force Blue. They look good with a slip-on shoe. A nice Oxford in a muted plaid or a Pringle wouldn't look too bad. You can't pull off a pair of pegs. Farrah's, they cover your legs. <laughs> A carpet knife with double blades, a gamp for when it's damp, some shades for when the twilight fades, smooth operetta, weekend in Lanzaretta. Neat, 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 please do not make me repeat, the dress code is hard and brief, look out for the F motif, spick and Spanish, borderline sportif, spotless, alive, she cried, Farrah's. The parallel stride. <laughs> Keep the faith. Keep the faith. This next one's uh, for my uh, postman's son, although he hasn't turned up to collect it. He knocked on the door, giving me something that wouldn't fit through the letterbox. He says, my lad likes you. He watches you on the telly. He says, uh, can you write him a poem? So I said, well, how old is he? He says, uh, eight. So I said, well, it's, I, what, I write pretty adult stuff. I'll do my best, you know, I'll tone it. All right, then what's his name? George. What can you do with a name like that? There's not many things rhyme with it, as you'll see here. It's limited. <laughs> <laughs> One day a fella named George found a suit of clothes in a gorge. <laughs> Inside the coat was a farewell note with a signature no one could forge. Please yourself. <laughs> I leave Radio 4 on when I'm writing poetry. Uh, it's inobtrusive most of the time. But I was writing this poem and uh, this the news came on. It was at the time of that G4 or G8 or something, uh, saving the planet in Canada or somewhere. <laughs> Everybody that cared about the planet was there. The Pope, Prince Charles. Prince Charles, he cares about the environment. I'd care as much as him if I had owned as much of it as he did. <laughs> leave, it. No, leave it out. Leave it out, cheap shot. <laughs> they were all there. Barack Obama, Prince Charles, the Pope, Bongo. Bongo had to get there, you know, representing the disenfranchised rock and roll public <laughs> who also care about the planet deeply and passionately. And uh, so he got there, and uh, apparently it came over on the news that Bongo, upon arrival there, he had his signature pieces stolen from his dressing room. They've looked in there, Bongo, there, Stetson, shades, leather pants, Bongos. Taken time out, he's gone out there and he's had his signature pieces swiped. Probably by somebody who doesn't even give a fuck about the planet. <laughs> That's what gets me. <laughs> so I wrote an outrage poem about it, and this one's called Bongo's Trousers. <laughs> who stole Bongo's trousers and his 10 gallon Stetson hat? He can't mither the bleeding Pope improperly dressed like that. <laughs> Who stole Bongo's trousers? Was it Posh or Bex? Yeah, they were there. <laughs> he can't save the bleeding planet without his bleeding checks. <laughs> Who stole Bongo's trousers? And can he have them back? He's trying to do some good in the world. That's no way to act. World politics is a tough enough gig without this sort of shit. He'll give you some other stuff if you give him back his kit. <laughs> yes, who stole that Stetson hat? Who stole those leather strides? And the Vegas period Elvis shades with the gold Meccano sides? <laughs> Trousers, shades, 80 pint Stetson, can he get them back? He's cutting a deal about third world debt and poverty and that. He doesn't have to care so much, he's all right as it is. It's rare to find such selflessness, especially in the biz. Who stole Bongo's trousers? They must be fucking sick. Was it some sinister bastard or who was that chick? She said her name was Bernadette, but then she would say that. <laughs> 
Anything to get those trousers, sunglasses and hats. Who stole Bongo's trousers and the million dollar shades? Was it the CIA or that metal European chambermaid? Whoever stole Bongo's trousers, the wraparounds and act, deserves to have their fingers broken. That's the end of that. I'd send in the UN troops. All systems go. Cos Bongo minus trousers equals I don't want to know. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. I always judge people by appearances, don't you? Anyway, you know, I think clothes are important. That's where the nudist camp falls down. Because <laughs> I judge by appearances. And I believe really tri deep down everybody does that. Uh, you know, if you're out in Peckham after 1am, sure, those seven guys coming towards you in hoods, they could be Franciscan monks. <laughs> Not ruling it out. <laughs> but I'm going to take uh, evasive action because I judge by appearances. 21 gun salute suit, this. Now, a uh, 21 gun salute, that's reserved for uh, royalty. So that's the kind of suit I want. A 21 gun salute suit. I was looking for a suit where I could throw out all my other clothes and live forever for the rest of my life in this one suit. A suit where I can fall down drunk in a ditch, get up the next morning and go on to a wedding or a, more likely a funeral <laughs> by the time of life. I could go to six a week, but no man can live on volivants alone. <laughs> so it's handy to have this. 21 gun salute suit by Dr. John Cooper Clark. I want a rubber baron on the toot suit, beef steak on croup for soup, and streamline round the glute suit, a pick me up on root suit, soft shoulders, nothing zoot, a man of some repute suit, a 21 gun salute suit. I want an ornery galoot suit, a no good owl hoot suit, a one funny move and a shoot suit, some tickety tackety boots, a shirt the colour of pastel fruits, an ooh you brute suit, you know a 21 gun salute suit, a rather dissolute though not yet destitute suit. I like it when I start to fray, dégagé in a military way, and I ain't prepared to pay. I ain't some pimps up popping J, I ain't prepared to pay. I want a coat, some pants, and a vest to boot, devoid of any telltale roots, with a kind of cultivated snoot, and creditors in hot pursuit, a sort of social parachute, a 21 gun salute suit, with the cutter and the schmutter in hot cahoots. A 21 gun salute suit. <laughs> Thanks a lot, we'll do it again, huh? You have been listening to or have just missed Dr. John Cooper Clark at the BBC. The show was written and performed by me, Dr. John Cooper Clark. Your MC was Johnny Green and the producer was Joe Nunnery. It was a BBC Studios production. Yeah.